So the deity of Christ and the virgin birth, taking a little bit of an uh, exorcist here from uh, a study to, to look at the myth that Jesus's virgin birth was copied from other pagan myths of virgin births. You know, it is amazing, just as an apologetic side note here, the lengths to which unbelief will go and the penchant that people will have to believe anything that is not the truth <clears throat> in the sense that people can know the truth in their daily lives and we can't live without it. But whenever that truth has to do with God or they see that truth bringing accountability on them and their knowledge of God, that truth is rejected for the most ridiculous, stupid, evidence-free claims that are so easily believed and repeated by people who revel in their unbelief and rebellion against God. And that comes up as well with this idea of the, the virgin birth of Jesus being copied in uh, from other ancient myths of other gods who were born through virginal conception and virgin birth. And it's just not true. There was this movie a few years ago. Um, I don't know if it's late in theaters. I don't think it was. It was on the internet. Uh, called Zeitgeist. And it made this claim that all these religions leading up to Christianity had these, these gods who were born on December 25th, had wise men following a star to them, had 12 disciples, were crucified and rose again, and were born from virgins. And it's just not true. It's just amazing this pseudo research in order to prove a point that's presented as undeniable fact when in actuality it's just a lie. Uh, but the claim is to get to the meat of this and keep this video fairly short the claim is the gods Horus, which is an Egyptian, ancient Babylonian, Mesopotamian god, Horus, Mithra, and Caesar Augustus were all born of virgin conception. This is something that uh, internet atheists, you know, claim quite frequently. There's no evidence for it, and there's evidence against it, as we'll see. But let's look at Horus. Even a Wikipedia search will show this is not true, by the way. But Horus is maybe recognized as this Egyptian god. There are several Horuses. It's not just one. Uh, one Horus in the sense of uh, that there's just one uh, myth that follows with continuity. There's several local gods over Egypt and other gods in the Mesopotamian world that share some features. So it's not really accurate to just speak of one Horus. But the idea Horus is this falcon god, has this bird head and uh, man's body. But Horus, they say, was born virgin birth, virgin conception. Uh, but here's the story. The ancient myth in Plutarch is described, and this is around since 3000 AD, uh, this story, that the body of Osiris, which is Horus's father, was torn and scattered. So Osiris was killed by, uh, some myths say, his brother Seth or Typhon, uh, it's another name for him, and that he's torn apart and scattered. So here's the quote. It says, the story which they relate at their only sacrifice and eating of a pig at the time of the full moon of how Typhon, or Seth, while he was pursuing a boar uh, by the light of the full moon, found a wooden coffin in which lay the body of Osiris. He rent it to pieces and scattered, uh, which he rent to pieces and scattered. Now, the earlier story is that there's this perfectly built coffin for Osiris and they, uh, Seth traps him in it, nails it shut, murders him, and then the body's found later and torn apart and all the body pieces are scattered. Okay, so this is Osiris, who's supposed to be the god Horus' father. Now there's a problem, not to get uh, inappropriate, but you need to know what the myth is. Uh, Isis, who is the half-sister and wife 
of Osiris goes on this quest to look for the pieces of the body to put them back together because she believes that through him, she will have a son who will be king. And so she takes the form of a kite, a bird, and starts flying around to find these pieces. She's able to reassemble the body, but there's one very key piece missing that will be essential, I'll just say, to uh, reproduction. And so let me read this quote from Plutarch explaining that. And this is important to know. I'll just include this. It says, of all the parts of Osiris's body, the only one which Isis did not, find, uh, did not find was the male member for reason that this had been at once tossed into the river and the Lepidotus and the sea bream and the pike had fed upon it. And it is from these very fishes that the Egyptians are most scrupulous in abstaining. But Isis made a replica of the member to, make, uh, to take its place and consecrated the phallus in honor of which the Egyptians, even at present day, celebrate a festival. If that's what it sounds like, it probably is, that Osiris's male member was missing, it was thrown into a river, eaten up by fish, as one legend puts it, and so she had to build a replica, and there's a festival, a celebration for this replica. Okay. Now, here's how the conception takes place. See if this sounds like the virgin birth. Isis, the powerful, took in his seed and created the heir who suckled the child in solitude. Osiris's son, Horus, stout of heart, justified son of Isis, heir of Osiris. So Isis, in the form of a bird, took the seed from the dead body of Osiris, or at least revived him enough that she could procreate with him, and in order to conceive Horus. Number one, Osiris and Horus had already been intimate together before this time in the myth. Number two, this is not virgin conception or birth. Neither of these take place if you actually look at the ancient myths themselves. But that does not stop people from trying to look for uh, reasons to discredit the truth. Another god, uh, more Mesopotamian god, Babylonian god, or Persian god, is Mithra. And uh, one scholar says, even quoting an inscription, says Mithra was known as the rock-born god. The inscriptions confirm this nomenclature. Uh, even one says, and then it says in Latin, Deo omnipenti, soli invictio, de genitori, rupe nato, which in the tr Latin translation means to the almighty God, son, invincible, Oops, correct my typo there, generative rock born from the rock, no woman, no virgin, no virgin birth. No conception at all. Mithra is said to have been born from a rock, not even born from a woman. So there's no virgin birth in this story either. Caesar Augustus. Now, Jesus, I believe in some texts like Mark 1.1, 1, 1, is paralleled with Caesar Augustus or the other Caesars. But I think it is by way of contrast. But here, see if this sounds like virgin birth, the myth of Caesar's birth, Caesar Augustus, who's born uh, or is around during, uh, I believe, 9 BC. As when Atia, Augustus's mother, had come in the middle of the night to the solemn service of Apollo, she had her, lit, lit, her litter set down in the temple and fell asleep, and while, while the rest of the matrons also slept. On a sudden, a serpent glided up to her and shortly went away. When she awoke and purified herself, as if after the embraces of her husband, at once there appeared on her body a mark in colors like a serpent, and she could never get rid of it, so that presently she ceased ever to go 
to the public baths. In the 10th month after that, Augustus was born and was therefore regarded as the son of Apollo. Now, Jesus, his story may come in here, but by way of contrast, this isn't a virgin birth. Atia, the mother of Caesar, went to sleep and then is briefly approached by a snake in the temple of Apollo. And so he's seen as being, you know, miraculously conceived there somehow, or there's some aspect of his birth. Um, suppose snake bite caused her to become pregnant or, you know, Apollo intervenes in some way. Uh, Augustus was born 10 months later and dubbed the son of Apollo, a son of the God or the gods, which Jesus may be contrasted to again in like texts like Mark 1, 1, the good news of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God, maybe showing that Jesus is the true son of God, unlike the Caesars. But uh, Atia is not a virgin. She already has another daughter. Uh, with with her husband, who's Augustus's Caesar Augustus's older sister, Octavia. You can read about this in the historian Suetonius uh, for one. So these are not virgin births. These are not virgin birth stories. They have no aspects. They may be miraculous birth stories, but they contain nothing in them like the unique virgin birth of Jesus. So the idea that people could just say so flippantly and foolishly without any evidence and much evidence to the contrary, that Jesus's virgin birth was copied from pagan myths are people who are either ignorant, lying, or both. And it's inexcusable either way, but this information should be available to Christians to know that they rest on solid ground as far as understanding that Christianity and the virgin birth of Jesus is not something that's just copied from other pagan religions. It is something that is unique and part of one of the greatest miracles on earth, the birth of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh into the world and in his incarnation.